Yeah, the final section for me now, how can you use that source data within your design and specification uh, process? So we've looked previously there how you can use source as a bit of a standalone platform to do product research discovery. But what about like the actual uh, specification uh, process? So let's just jump across to MBS Chorus. So this is our spec uh, product. We've got webinars that just focus on MBS Chorus. But I'm writing the spec for this particular project. And what you can see is inside it, it's things like mason reliefs, partitions, uh, sanitary accessory systems. Now, if I open uh, masonry leaf systems, and I've already added the link to concrete block, as I come down here, what you can see is as I select aggregate concrete block, I get all of the technical guidance. As a specifier, I get the links to the standards. But you can see that 34 of the products from MBS source are relevant to aggregate concrete blocks. So when I click in this next field, you get all of the products that you've previously seen in MBS source. And it's just come across now and you can click on one of those, like read about it again, and then you just click the plus button and it drops in. So you've got your third party certification, you've got your guidance on application, what it's suitable uh, for. Just before I add this in, I'm just going to show the alignment between the generic spec and the manufacturer's content. And I need to play a spot the difference there, but you've got the same, same headings, the same language, the same drop down values, the same uh, units. And at the point where you click plus, that just sort of goes from source and drops into your spec. So if we just have a, like a slow look through what's happened here for a product, this comes in as a chip, which is hyperlinked to the, the site information online. You get full address details. If you don't include all of this, you can just come and sort of park it away as a specifier. You may just want to have the email address. Oh, that's fine, just park, park that off. And then you get the, the link to the actual uh, product itself and source. And that's going to be maintained in the PDF when you publish the spec so that cost consultants, contractors, whoever can, can click on that and get the information they need. If it's a standard property, like this pro product always is group one configuration. It comes in parked by default. If you've got a decision to make, like what the particular strength class would you like or what have you, that comes in as a drop down value with guidance on the right hand side where applicable. And you can go through and uh, fill in the specification decisions. If you're on a procurement scheme where maybe the architect hasn't got the absolute final say on product decision, they could say that this is sort of like deemed to comply and then bring back the specification properties that are the like the minimum on, minimum on that uh, equivalency or higher that you'd sort of specify in the prelims. So you could say that it must have a tolerance category of D1 and group one, and you know the lignocyte ash GP meets the, meets the spec. So all the information is in there for you to toggle on and off to, to get that sort of nice tight specification uh, that you want. Uh, if I jump across and just show how slightly different systems work. So if I go to a partition system here, it starts off very similar, uh, but when I come to system manufacturer, you get them on the right hand side. If I pick a partition system build up from the likes of Canal here, so let's put in the, 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 this one here. The slight difference is it drops into spec, all is the same at the start. But because this is referenced in the product references, you need 15 mil, 50 millimeters of the canal for acoustic C stud. You need to have the, the approved uh, whatever wafer head screws if you want to uh, receive the performance that you want. We're not automatically parking those off. So they're there, will be in the printed spec. And then you've got to make uh, just the spec decisions that, that could potentially vary. So things like, uh, you've got a choice there on the different types of horizontal uh, board joints. And again, guidance uh, provided. And for something complex, like your sort of more complex systems, you can always uh, jump across and just sort of contact the manufacturer as well. And just say, like, I've specified these four or five partition systems and get them on the phone, get them on a Teams meeting and just sort of go through things to make sure you specified exactly the right thing to, to, to achieve the performance uh, that you want, get, get recommendations on execution, uh, et cetera. One more sort of final examples. Uh, 
come, acro come across the sanitary accessory systems, it may be a hand dryer here that I've already researched and sort of favorited in source. If I jump back across the source and I'll, I'll just go to this Dyson hand dryer I had open. It's a bit of a power user trip, trip, but you can click on here to get that, that hyperlink. And then you jump back across the chorus. So that's on the clipboard now, copy to the clipboard. And uh, you just click paste in here. And it just gives you confirmation. Are you sure you want to add this product? And when you click add, it drops into the spec. You've got the chips and uh, as you start sort of moving down for your spec decisions, it's all synchronized up. So MBS chorus, MBS source, two different platforms, but with, with that really nice integration between the, between the two products. So that's the specifications side. Chorus also links to the 3D modeling environment. Just gonna show a Revit uh, example here when we're on the screen. But this is the, 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 the Cooper's Fire roller shirt that we saw earlier. So you've got the technical information in the spec uh, to, to make sure that's there, that product's being specified. This is the 3D digital object that's been downloaded. And if you look at just, like, first of all, it's not a big object. So we're looking at about 1.2, 1.3 uh, in terms of its, its size megabytes. And then jumping across, it's just nice little subtle touches that make designers' lives easier. So it's linked to the spec. It depends on like, the visualization you're creating from here. You might want to have the, the fire curtain uh, open, or you might want to have the fire curtain uh, down. And then when you're doing like the real sort of detail type stuff, if I just sort of zoom in here, there's different ways that uh, the, the, the channels and the bottom bars and things that, that connect to the sort of surrounds. But really, really important things that you want to get right when you, you're doing the design. But if you look here at the bottom, uh, if I put the, the jumbo bar on there, and you can imagine taking a section just showing how that uh, connects with the base. And when we're looking at the, the sort of different welding plate options, as you change there, the, the object changes uh, as well, which means when you take your sections uh, through there, your, your floor plans, etc., you can just get those details right, but still with a light object with the, the core of the information in the spec, which is linked to the uh, source. Uh, itself with that sort of record of uh, what's been specified at that point in time. So hopefully getting that specification and design workflow working really sort of tightly, tightly together. Just to show some real quick examples from a real life project. This is MBS offices in Newcastle. You can see how the architects JDDK used the Kingspan access floor objects to do the design of, of the office where I I sit and work from, and you can see some of the, the product specification decisions. This was actually an MBS create spec, which we've uploaded in the chorus, but you can see the specified the Velux roof light, and there's the building as it was in construction with the Velux roof light above our, our cafe, and here's where they've specified particular uh, flat roofing system from, from Bowder, a bit like the canal, for example, for the, the partition, and then uh, photographs I took when I was making a a cup of coffee one morning of the, the roof structure getting put together for, for our sort of rooftop uh, garden and then all of the bowder materials as specified by the architects JDDK arriving on site getting sort of lifted up to the roof and constructing uh, the, 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 the roof to the quality as specified by the by the architect. 